So here we're told that sequences are generated by this recurrence relation. We're also told that u0 equals 5. We're asked to show that u2 is equal to this expression. So let's just look at the setup that we've got. We've got u0, u1, u2, u3, and so on. There's the un, and there's the term after it. And the recurrence relation tells us how to get from the nth term to the n plus 1th term. It tells us to multiply the nth term by k and then subtract 20. So the procedure is multiply by k and take away 20. Now that's a procedure that works all the way along the sequence. You take one term, in particular it could be u0, multiply by k, and then subtract 20. You take term u1, and to proceed to term u2, again, you multiply it by k, and subtract 20. And the same procedure goes on all the way along the sequence. That's how the sequence is generated. So let's look at the particulars. u0 is 5. And we know to get to u1, we have to multiply u0 by k and subtract 20. But we know what u0 is. It's 5. So we've got 5k minus 20. And now we know an expression for u1. So let's move on to u2. How do we get u2 from the previous term? We multiply u1 by k and subtract 20. Do we know what u1 is? It's 5k minus 20. So let's multiply out these brackets. We'll get 5k squared minus 20k minus 20. So we've shown that u2 is 5k squared minus 20k minus 20. Let's move on to part B. It says determine the range of values of k for which u2 is less than u0. Now what does that mean? Well it means that u2, 5k squared minus 20k minus 20, is less than u0. u0 we know is 5. So we have a quadratic inequation. Let's take 5 from both sides. 5k squared minus 20k minus 25 is less than 0. Now, in an inequality, you're allowed to divide both sides by the same positive number and still keep that inequality. So if I divide everything on the left by 5 and the 0 on the right by 5, I'll end up with k squared minus 4k minus 5 is less than 0. Alternatively, you could take 5 out as a common factor on the left. Now, to think about this situation that we're faced with, well, it's not an x-axis, it's a k-axis. k squared minus 4k minus 5, if we plotted the values of these, for instance, if we use the y-coordinates to plot the values of k squared minus 4k minus 5, we'd have a parabola, and it would look like that. If the coefficient of k squared was negative, it would be like that. So that's the shape we're expecting here. Now, where on earth is it placed on these axes? One of the ways we can find out is to find out where that parabola cuts, in this case, the k-axis. In other words, when does this value, when is the y-value equal to 0? 
So let's solve k squared minus 4k minus 5 equals 0. Now that's a task we're familiar with. We try and factorise that quadratic expression. First terms, only choice is k times k. For the 5, the only choice is a 5 times 1. The outside 2 give us 1k. The inside 2 give us 5k. Well, to get minus 4k, we would take away the 5k and add the 1k. And check the lasts. Negative 5 times positive 1 does give us negative 5. So that's the factorization. And therefore, if k minus 5 times k plus 1 is 0, one of these two terms is 0. Either k minus 5 is 0, in which case k is 5, or k plus 1 is 0, in which case k is negative 1. So we've hunted down where this parabola that shows the values of k squared minus 4k minus 5, where it crosses the k axis. It crosses at negative 1 and 5. And therefore, the values, graph of the values, will look like that. Now, we're asked to find out the values of k that are less than 0. In other words, the ones where the y-coordinate is negative, the ones, points that are below the x-axis on the k-axis on this graph. Now, that's all the values of k that lie between negative 1 and 5, not including negative 1 and 5, because it's strictly less than. So that means the values we require lie between negative 1 and 5. So that is the required range. It's a range of values of k for which the values of k squared minus 4k minus 5 are negative. In other words, the graph is below the k axis. Negative 1, less than k, less than 5.